started.
probably should have already, already, already always gone. known that we are never allowed to have trees within 15 feet of, I guess, the dam. Not like the whole, like, I, you know, I'm not sure from what extent from the dam how many feet this way and that way, but at least 15 feet of the shoreline around the dam. I'm tr still trying to get clarification from that, but we have to be careful where we put trees down there. So um, either way, we're probably not in compliance with state law for where the trees have been planted. And, and furthermore, though, if they can't uh, get it relicensed, then we're all, we may potentially, we're not going to have a relicense. Um, but the town's not going to be able to afford to pay for the relicense. Um, and we're going to lose out on, what, 35 grand a year in income that we depend on? Or, or, or more, and or they more, owe the professional services already so, encumbered by the... I think the tree are going to have to come down. Yeah. So, we... As a historical, well, I'm speaking as an ex as a historical committee person. Sure. Um, could they confirm those distances? There's a, there's a big beach that's right next to the fence that I've heard. I don't want to go and understand why it needs to come down. Okay, sure. We can ask them to confirm the distances. Yep. Um, who said something about a fence? Where did you hear about a fence? Was well, that's where the, you want to see it? The, the, uh, the ribbons are tied around uh, trees on the river side of the fence as opposed to the park side of the fence. There's a broad iron right. fence. There. Okay. But did I misunderstand you that you think that they're removing the fence itself? No, no. no. Okay. Just the trees. No. Okay. Just the trees. The tree um, adjacent just to the fence. Yeah, that was my, my only concern too, was that big one. That was what, one about two feet in diameter, uh, right next to the fence. And, uh, you know, if it doesn't need to come down, if, if there's a question where people are juggling mm -hmm. and it really doesn't need, can they, you know, make a yes. Ask them about yes. Yes. yes, I'm, I'm waiting for um, a call back from the Dam Bureau. I've left a message with them. <laughs> Um, I like that. They have an information sheet about trees and dams, but there's nothing that says explicitly what the rules are. They're more like recommendations. So I'm trying to get clarity about what exactly the absolutes are. Right. Yes. And there are also trees, my understanding was, that are in the railroad right of way that aren't right. allowed also. So but some of those have ribbons around them. So. Yeah, there's so, the some yeah. right up against the, the, the abutment of the bridge. And the railroad. <laughs> It's supposed to be taking care of that and maintaining that, but we know that they don't always do that. Well, who's going to take, who's, where's the expense coming from taking these trees down? On us or on them? The entire expense of everything related to the relicensure is with Green Mountain Power, who leases the hydro plant. Okay. Okay. They've so that's not any of our we're expense. We're not bringing any expense with Railroad. Us. Well, they should build the railroad. Yeah. Either yeah. way, they're right. managing okay. it outside of us. Right. Yes. So, is the reason why that the, the trees have to come down is because if they, for some reason, a bad storm or high waters and stuff, and they fall, it will damage the dam? Is that the reason? So, that's Ooh, part of it, I think, because there are those, they're, they're going to be replacing the boards that go on top of the dam. and. Mm -hmm. If trees fall in the water, you know, trees can crash over the dam and break the boards. Yeah. Um, but they also um, want trees cleared so that dams have enough light, I think, just to make sure ice clears as quickly as possible. I'm not really sure. Um, but there's also the added risk of tree roots penetrating and stock. Yeah. I was going to ask that. Just ask. Because you know, trees up river can. I, I realize that there's a grate around there, but I assume if things break off, it might be able to get through the grate and get into the pen stop. Maybe. This wasn't certainly a, a project that we went looking for. I should oh, say that. So. Yeah, and, and but, but we appreciate everyone's concern. So right. and it's good that the questions were asked because. Yeah. Oh, it, 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 it mentioned it to me. And, uh, yeah. No. It's, I mean, I, I, I heard, I was listening carefully, that there, there may be some ambiguity in the rules. So if there are any absolutes, well, we can, and, and it, you can save that beach at least next to the fence, that would be, that would be good. The beach by the boat iron fence. Yeah, I mean, if there's any question, okay. that they're, we're going to ask. If they're winging it in any way. Well,
Well, I'm guessing the engineers are probably not wearing it, but we can check. You mean the engineers on the railroad? Or no, definitely not the railroad. Okay. Definitely not the railroad. There are engineers that are managing the repair. I was, I was trying to make a funny. I did not I'm succeed. I'm sorry, Nelson. I'm entirely too I gave you a smile, Nelson. Yeah, I, 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 it was more like a grimace, but, you know. Well, speak to the quality of the joke. All right. Well, thank, thanks a lot. Thank you, gentlemen's names. I got Nelson. I just need your name. I'm Mark. 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 Oh. Sorry. No, I, I don't make light of it. I do appreciate you coming down. Yeah. yeah. We were all concerned about it as well. Right. And with the story kept changing, so. Yeah. Yeah. I think we have clear now. Okay. Right. Yeah. We're it's not clear what the radius from the dam is and how much is okay. discretionary or absolute. But the reasons why. But now. the reasons yeah. why. Yeah. We're, yeah. Okay. we're clear on that now. Right. Yeah. We weren't so clear last week. Yeah. So. I. I. Mean, I, I I never thought of that root thing. I, I none of us did that. Really. Yeah. We were all. Yeah. But the real thing we thought it was further. We, the markers hadn't gone up yet, so we thought it was we some of the memorial trees up against by the fence, and we were concerned about that. But those aren't going to be touched. So. Thank you. Anyways, thank you. Guys. Thank Is there you. any other public comment before we we move on to department head business? Seeing none. Yeah. We have a fire police chief this year. My wife was upset. She was not a good 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 14. We have the calling overhead door, the spring and, and cabling for the door on the sally port snap. So they came and repaired it the same day. They sent an invoice for $363.50, and that will come out of the town hall maintenance. Let's move and I have a couple questions. All right. I'll move purchase order 1689 to overhead door company for $363.50 uh, for service bills for repair broken cable. Second. Is the uh, police department under the maintenance agreement that, uh, yeah, with, with Haley with, Door? Oh, Haley, not overhead door? Mm -hmm. Is there a reason we went with overhead instead of Haley? No, that's, well, we were not aware of the fact that uh, the service contract extended to us. We were not aware okay. of the fact that they came and did an inspection. They alleged they did. Um, gotcha. George called them uh, last week. They said yeah. they put a sticker on the door. I checked the doors, and we had no stickers, stickers on the doors. And we've always used overhead in the past, so that's okay. why we, uh, we called them. Well, clearly, overhead needs to get paid because they perform the service. But can we follow up and find out about Haley? And why there was no stickers? Right. Yes. If they they're claiming they came to the inspection. Even if they'd done the inspection, a cable. Yeah, they can know. snap. I mean, that, that can happen. That, that's fair enough, but if they're claiming they did. But how did they get in the police station for that? I mean, how could they... They had to get one of you guys in to let them in. Correct. So clearly that didn't happen. Again, I don't know if you can add this. Well... I saw the lieutenant and the sergeant. Ouch. Ooh. Hey, okay. Recall Haley coming in. Yeah, he... There's something in my back. <laughs> the the club, club, every now and then I turn the right way. It, the member of the walking wounded is not totally off the right way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so. Alright, so maybe we could try to get to the bottom of why Haley is claiming they did this and didn't put their sticker out. In what buildings did they do? Right. Yes. Could we send that her way to make sure that she's of got course. everything she needs? Yeah, I just... Yeah. So, purchase order. Okay. we have any other discussion on the purchase order? All right, so purchase order 1689 has been moved and seconded. Are we ready for the question? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? All right, I'll sign it when you're done. Mm -hmm. I'm sure to thank you all for filling in this evening. Oh, of course.
Okay, Townsend Energy sent us the invoices for the annual service contracts for four of the HVAC units and the heating system. Uh, normally it's five HVAC units and one heating system, but we have the new unit still in the warranty. So the grand total minus the, uh, the one unit is $1,464. I guess uh, assuming that will come out of the town hall maintenance line item as well. Make a motion to accept purchase order 1688 to Townsend Energy for the annual service contract for the four AC units and one heating system. Uh, I'll second that. Okay. Any discussion? What exactly does that cover? Do you, know? you get a you get a discount on the parts. Okay. And they do a uh, an annual checkup. Of so it's, it's it's just a discount, it's not a replacement. Like, no, it's not a replacement. For kind of maintenance. Um, doing the uh, preventive maintenance, like the cleaning and stuff, that's part of it, right? Or do we get both of that as well? They change the filters and they look at the units, but they no uh, no uh, serious maintenance. That's above and beyond. Okay. We have a separate. Um, Separate call for, for cleaning out the boiler every year. It's not it's not handled by this. I guess I have a question if this is really worth it. Um, Fourteen hundred and sixty-four dollars for what for the inspection of the. Uh, well, if we're not getting this the annual service, it's we still have to pay for that, right? The annual service, and if we're going to replace the boiler. Which would then be under warranty? Not even service. Right? The annual cleaning is part of the service. Oh, okay. Mass. I'm sorry, I misunderstood. Okay. Then I'm good. Are we all okay? Okay. Let you all come to your conclusion. I argue. <laughs> all right. So, purchase order 1688 has been moved and seconded. Any other discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? have this so you can see what we've been talking about. Okay. Yeah, whenever you're ready. Oh, okay. well, well, we probably shouldn't say that. Oh. Taking the notes has to be what? Sorry. <laughs> I'm not sure. Anyone so. confused? All right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Generator Connection has sent their uh, two-year preventive maintenance payment for the generator. $630, and again, that will come out of the town hall maintenance. I'll move purchase order 1687 to Generator Connection for $630 for a two-year maintenance agreement. Second. It's that time of year mm -hmm. to all the... Contracts. Okay. Is there any discussion of purchase order 1687? I'm wondering, Bob, if you've decided um, where this goes on the CIP. Except I think you said that it's past its. It's past its prime. The generator itself? Yes. So, is that on, you know? Well, uh, you know, I don't know where it, where it sits at this point because originally it was going to be part of the either we renovate this building or we get back out of here. Right. But, uh, since that's up in limbo only at this time, I think that we probably have to sit down and find out, uh, have a conversation between us or whatever, and say, you know, what's the long term plan for this building? And do we have the CIP or do we just wait and see what happens? So, um, the facilities director from the school <laughs> and Tom Clark are meeting here tomorrow to do what they can to assess the building. Okay. Talk about it on the next month. Should we just go for the one year? I'm asking you, Bob. Should we just do a one year annual? I don't know. Um, well, then you know, we'll assuming something happens in the positive next year, you're still talking, you're, you're in the building for another year after that, anyway. Right, I think. Oh, that's think true. So. I think two that's, years that's is safe. That's true. Right? That's true. Okay. Well, just go for it. 
Any other discussion or questions? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Sign that contract. safe deposit box here at the PD oh. where people can walk in and, and uh, anonymously drop off their uh, prescriptions in the box there. It doesn't cost us anything, but we can deliver it and we just have to install it in the lobby. Okay. The last time we did a DEA drop down, I think we had 34 pounds of stuff that, that went. Now where will it be? In the we'll town hall? It'll be in the lobby of the police department. Oh, the police department. Yes. So someone has to be there to let them in, right? 
and then someone comes and gets the stuff, or do you have to no, empty it? No, we empty it when we have the DEA going to take back the bags. So oh, every okay. six months, so we would empty it. Yeah. And then I'll just send okay. ship to the DEA for uh, disposal. Perfect. Um, I guess you folks want to talk about the range. We do, but before we go there, can we talk about this box that's sitting over there? <laughs> the um, the front office, the tax collector and town clerk would like to have that put out somewhere. Uh, is it outside or here? In, it must be outside, right? So people uh, it's outside it. so that they can access, they, they can have the ability to pay for things when the office is in person. So, one of the things noted was that the outside camera would cover it, but I'm not sure if we can install it in a place where the outside camera would cover it. I think we've had that conversation before. You want to have that on a wall close by the door and the camera doesn't cover that. Okay. Well, that answers the question. Okay. Thank you. So it has to be like on the door? Well, on, on, on the wall? Yeah. I would think. I just want to put it in a post. Or you can attach yeah, it to the bridge. Yeah, you want to secure it, you know, set people putting money or checks right. or whatever. You want to secure the building. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not necessarily that we can't add a camera facing the door from the outside, directly on that box. Oh, oh, I thought, the that's the, I thought the camera did face the door. The camera faces the, it faces out the wall. Yeah, it faces out, down, down the steps, you know, in front of the door. Well, we can talk about it some more than I don't know. Yes, the gun range. <laughs> Let's talk about that. Sort of. In fact, one of the gentlemen that had, had come in and complained about it had, was here earlier, so I wish we brought it up then. But, uh, we've had a number of well, folks with some concerns about noise. Or was it an inquiry? You know, uh, no, yeah. complaint about noise uh, in, in uptick in use. Um, uh, mostly weekends. Mostly on the weekends, yeah, that's what they were complaining about. So I don't know. Are we, are we training our folks on the weekends there, or is it the, the county that's going to another department? There we did. Yeah. Okay. We did have one person from the sheriff's department out there. Uh, I think probably it, it was just before the complaint from... Well, there was the loud noise complaint. That was that's separate from... This, that, that's these separate. came in before that, that, yeah. that stuff. Yeah. So. Yeah. Um, there were mostly that, neighbors that was, up on summer for some road here. Uh, we since curtailed all use out there on Sundays. We okay. curtailed all use out there after 6 p.m. unless it's uh, low uh, light conditions and we're planning to do that in the fall when it actually gets darker earlier. So we, we reviewed, as I reviewed, I think, I think we all got it, so I don't want to speak for anyone else, but when, when we, when the previous select board approved expanding its use uh, to other departments and to the county, um, that hasn't, that hasn't been, we haven't gone above and beyond that. No, it's still us, it's still the SWAT team and the Sheriff's Department. And at that time, you explained to us why you wanted to expand it to to those other departments. Are those reasons still valid? Still, still valid, yes. Yeah, these two folks weren't sitting here sure. right, when when that was explained, so it might be helpful for us all to hear it again. That doesn't mean we're, we can't continue the conversation, but it'd be good if we all hear the conversation. If you don't mind explaining your, your reasoning why you thought it was a good idea to... Well, I would say the SWAT team. I got an officer that's on the SWAT team, and um, you know, it actually costs us less by having him here as opposed to sending him elsewhere to do this. Um, the SWAT team that the um, the range of SWAT team using prior to us was up in Rochester and um, was adjacent to a. Was um, it a school? It was a, it was a um, housing housing development. complex yeah, development. Yeah. And, and whatnot, so the city basically uh, shut them out of there. You know, the SWAT team uses it twice a month at the most. Um, usually one day with the shooting, one day they have classroom instruction. So, uh, we're actually getting less use out of, out of the range now because up until a couple of years ago, we allowed the general public to use the range, and they were up there quite frequently. Uh, the only difference now is that um, you know, like when the SWAT team is there, they're there for eight hours and they're you know, shooting right. probably six hours of that eight hours. And but those are weekdays during the daytime. It's not at night time, it's not right. on weekends. And we love the sheriff's department to come because, you know, uh, Perkins was a long time employee of the department. He was a fire instructor up there. And they were looking for a place to, to go. So it was nice to have, to keep, you know, Perkins and the sheriff's department moved and used to over there. 
correct me if I misremember it, but at one time the, the SWAT team wanted um, an assessment uh, to be part of it. Right? There, was, there was a fee to be part of the SWAT team, several thousand dollars, if I recall correctly. Was that waived because we let them use the facility? Am I misremembering that? No. Well, originally they wanted 5000 Right. Minimum okay. 5000 The Washington Department, they wanted more. Well, that type of voted down, but it would change. Okay. All right. So everyone pays $1,000 per year now. Okay. For their supplies, their ammo, their, and their you know, flashbangs, and their doors, smash doors, and right, things right. like that. So, yeah. um, I do know the sergeant has been in, in, in conversation with the road agents, and there are plans um, before this fall to actually raise the berm all around the building, all around the range. Okay. So that should help with some of the noise. Okay. All right. Um, one of the other concerns that was raised. For the SWAT team, when they come in, it, it, it could be a little disconcerting to folks that are maybe showing up to the transfer station and they see several armored vehicles and, and that sort of thing. Um, we have in the past been sending out an email to folks ahead of time, just a reminder of the other SWAT team will be practicing. Have we stopped doing that? or You may be sending out, I just don't look at it because I know it's what, why you're well, sending well, it. Well, no, so. because it's, you know, they're there twice a month. And okay. Uh, Asked here to do that. I mean, we can still do it, but right. uh, I think we got. I thought we got to the point where people get used to seeing the vehicles in town on, well, on Tuesdays. A new crop um, of folks have you know, told us that they're not. So I mean, we can why we're having a Yeah, we can certainly. I can certainly ask here okay. to start going in. Is that good for folks? I mean, I read, read, I think that's 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 Feel free to. I mean, I don't want to monopolize the conversation. I just want to make sure we got out why it was. It was. Reciprocal. We were hoping we could get other things from other departments, and you know, you all sort of share resources where right. you can. So that's why I originally made some of those things. But we're limiting it on the weekends, and I think that was the biggest complaint. So, but there were that most of the complaints were coming from the Summersworth Road area. If they were hearing it, and they're closer. So. Talk about the firing range. Uh, there are people that want us to tar and feather us for allowing anyone to use it. So, and other people want to tar and feather us. So, don't so I mean, I think so. you confirmed that it's that there is no increased use. We're not, we're not the center for the lower half of the state or anything. No. Um, I, yeah, I don't, I don't, you know, maybe it's a, it was a seasonal thing where there weren't leaves on the trees. Yeah. Um, I mean, six hours uh, of shooting sounds like a long time, <laughs> but, uh, is but, it, but it's off and on because they do drills and, and things, things like that. I mean, it's just not straight six hours, but over the course of an eight-hour day, I would think six of it is off and on. Yeah. Uh, I do know uh, uh, about a month and a half ago they had a regional like, jamboree up there, but they didn't fire any. You know, there were probably 40, 50 vehicles up there, but they didn't, they didn't sh shoot off. For the two days they were up there, they were doing tactics and maneuvers and things like that. So, um, I thought if anyone would complain, it would be one of those days because the, it may have been the transfer station was actually open one of those days. Yeah, that may be one, the, one of the days when people were telling us about that. Yeah. But nobody, nobody called us to ask us to, you know, what's going on, well, they just why, called to or, us to you. Know, so. <laughs> That's how it goes. It's easier to complain to us, and then we'll ask you, and then we'll figure it out for Anything else we want to talk about with that? I know we need to go into non-public or something else. So. I don't believe we need to go into non-public. It would be helpful under fire, though. Mm -hmm. I'd like to have a conversation with both chiefs at the same time. So. Can I move before we go into non-public? Can I just um, can we talk about space needs? Certainly. Please, has the letter gone out? It has went out today, away? so it's probably not hit the news. Um, okay. Yeah. Okay, so as you're aware, it's just you and me left on the committee, or one's left. So, um, so we have put out a request to have four individuals. Is that right? Did we say four with no alternates? Um, yes, four okay. with no alternates is what the charge says. Yep. I did not put in the announcement itself how many people we're looking for, just but just that we're people. looking for people. Okay. Um, and then I attached the charge so that people can read more about okay. it if they're interested. So as soon as we get that information about, we'll have our first meeting. We're mm -hmm. going to start up again. Okay? All right. Okay.
yeah. he resigned or um, retired. So um, if we find out the first year that Harry was elected, that would be the year he retired. Brownie. So you'll let the you'll let Caroline know when it happens so that my, my the board can be represented. If it's, it's all about timing issue, of course. So that's trying to find out who yeah. wants the want ball there and something like that. Very short notice. Sure it's going to be at St. Mary's. Well, where are the services? I don't know what the uh, task of the scheme is going to be all the services. So I haven't heard anything about it. We'll get it. Okay. Thank you. Is there anything else we have to do for this evening? Mark, did you get an answer on CPR and um, first aid for Rick for the remaining Sean three? Sean was looking to try to find a night to do it. Okay. He's up at the station now. They're actually over doing some vehicle extrication training. I will come up again. Okay. And the weekends weren't. No, during the weekend, whatever is. And I said a night would work. He Absolutely. Talk to me and they were going to try to take care of that. Yeah. I'll, uh, I'll uh, ask him again. Okay. I'll get back on it after the last week. Okay. And, uh, I went into the holiday and it's. Yeah. Yeah. We'll um, try to accommodate. Do whatever we can, and, and and but then we can go to another location if we have to. Um, but I think there's only three. Just um, three. Yeah, I believe right. that's yeah. the case. So. No, I question on the day of it. So we do this. We'll probably come down. And yeah. Do it. Thank you. They have a plan until they can get that. That they're not going to be the point of contact but the first first day there because they have many of them, so that's, that's at this point the plan. They're still tired of this. Okay. Just got to finish that so they can fulfill the job. Correct. Awesome. And um, if you would alert Sean that if he has capacity and it's okay, I don't know how many other town employees might partake, but if he's open to that, we could potentially open it up to other people who are expiring that missed the last round of renewals. All right. I will try to find the plan. I don't know. About five, six. The other issue with it is we used to be able to get the cards for five bucks. Well, now through American Heart is also tied We have to get the cards through McGregor. And now they're 20 bucks a pack. Why? Well, Greg's probably making <laughs> so McGregor is making money off of. Uh... And not doing the program. Yep. And there's very few programs out there anymore because there's very few people that are going to get their instructor. Well, the only way to get the cards is through McGregor. Right now, that's the only access that we have. Uh, York Ambulance has no instructors. We've reached out to them. They have nobody that can, that can run the program. We used to do it directly through American Heart, and that was through Frisbee Hospital. We used to get it, like I said, five bucks. Mm -hmm. They don't do it anymore. I mean, so we have certified instructors that do the work. You're just talking about physically getting the cards from someone mm -hmm. so we can issue them to the people you're training. Right. Once they pass, they, all the paperwork goes in there, and then they'll issue the card. But you can't get it directly through American Heart. But McGregor gets them from the Heart Association. Yeah. And they're like a sole proprietor for it. However they manage to get through that hoop, I don't know. But that's the other issue we kind of run into with some of this stuff. It's Sean paid for some of the stuff. I mean, they were this is something that's going to continue. Yep. Right. Yes. Really as long as we know, we can that have been in our budget, for sure. Right. So we'll definitely take care of that. That just you know, popped up last time when yep. we did it. Sean told him I had to pay for it. And it was part of streamlining the process so we could get done keep the program up and running. Right. So we just did. But as we move forward, oh, okay. that's just another hurdle. We need to have a plan Absolutely. for next year. We'll have a plan for sure next year. I'll take care of that. Anything else for Chief? Thank you. Okay. Have a great night. Thank you. Let me know if he's out of pocket with anything. Is the highlight, I'll take, I'll take is, uh, the George is not coming in. Okay. We can talk about any of those things, or we yeah. can table any of those things. Well, any of it, well, is the purchase order pressing? I mean, the task order pressing? It will be revised, likely, because if you look at the email thread, um, there's a lot of conversation about um, the guardrail. George is recommending a guardrail right. there, yes. uh, since the barriers have been removed. Back, yeah. or removed. He feels as though there's adequate shoulder to install them. Mm -hmm. um, it's a qu so 
that information needs to get relayed to Aaron, which may impact the task order. Also, the task order includes storm drainage, which has been otherwise addressed. All right, so we'll hold um, off on this then until George is yes, done and Yes, but um, just... Yes, the other thing is that there's a dis what, what appears to be a discretionary decision about whether or not we are going to... Um, the guardrail that George had quoted doesn't meet um, the state's safety specifications. Yeah. However, most of what we have around town and even the state installs, there are plenty of other guardrails. So there's that conversation about you know cost versus what kind of handrail. Okay. Uh, um, guardrail. guardrail right. Yeah. Okay. So is George coming in next week? Um, no. No, he's on vacation. So. So this needs to get taken care of on tonight. No, I don't believe you can because it's going to be of a different scope. The scope's going to change. We'll put it so, back in the folder then, or not? Yes, please do put it back in the folder. And then the question is, do you want to talk to Aaron and have Aaron come to the um, Aaron with chance of Quail Tanner? Do you have him coming on Monday, next Monday then? Um, when your meeting starts at seven. Yeah. Is that? You want to take the that next week? I mean, yeah, the library. We need, okay. need to get a result, so. Okay. Can we have a copy of that sent to us so we can read it? It is in your email. Yeah. Um, just today. Yeah, just today. Oh, today. Okay. It, it okay. only just came in. So Thank what's, you. What's wrong with the drainage on Cricket Lane? Cricket Lane? So this is a situation that George and um, that the road agent and the uh, fire chief both separately brought to your attention that the people that live in the end of the cul-de-sac are downhill from the road and the cul-de-sac cul itself is downhill from the rest of the road right. so they're receiving a lot of storm water drainage right. along the road and into their driveway and flooded their property in the winter because of the nature of how winter has changed because you've got frozen snow banks that aren't melting and then you get rain and the rain has nowhere to go because oh, right. the right. snow banks are in the way yeah. so um, George and I went out and looked at it after the residents came in to the last stormwater committee meeting feeling as though that might be the appropriate group to talk to. So yeah. I took down their information and um, let them know that it would be this board that would make a decision about what, if anything, to do about it. Mm -hmm. um, the cul-de-sac abuts water sewer district property. There is clearly what used to be a road or right of way into that property, and now people are dumping their leaves in that property, in the road right of way and beyond the road right of way, as well as within the cul-de-sac. So, clearly residents of the area. There's no way to know which house exactly, but you know, right. so someone down somewhere down there. So. Um, when George comes back, um, he'll have some recommendations. Um, there's some mild ditching work that could happen, maybe a Cape Cod style curb, um, maybe some signs about um, dumping your leaves. Because dumping on that's not allowed numbers. by for stormwater regulations that we have not enacted okay. as well. So, um, so we'll th that's we'll the nature. Comes in. Yes, but that's the nature of the situation. And computer purchase, we're going um, He's happy to table that as well. So Perfect. Well, we're going to table everything under highway. Then. And if you'd like, we can address welfare and non-public at the end of the meeting. We'll do that at so. the end of the meeting unless there's any objections we want to make people leave again. Okay. Okay. Town administration space needs committee. So the email went out? Well, the letter um, I, I sent the email to the person who sends the email out. Right. So it has been, um, it, people will be aware of it. Okay. So. Perfect. And I'm still awaiting the, I sent a follow-up email to the consulting firm about a contract. And we still haven't heard from them. No, she, she, you know, she said that summer would be difficult. And, sure. she, you know, the, um, you know, later in July, August, September, she could get the work done. So, you know, the contract, I, I, I sent a follow-up to say that if we can do anything about getting the data for her, because that's really what starts the process, then. What I'm, um. But if they can't give us a contract, I mean, seriously. Agreed. So I'm trying to find a way to, you know, my, my the nature of my email is to say, how can we expedite this and get some well, information so you all can make a decision and get moving on The first it. company that we, um, we decided to go with this other one because we like the scope of services slightly better. The, the first company, maybe we can review their uh, proposal again then. 
And clearly, this this isn't getting done. So I can I can ask them for a contract. I want to give we want to give someone money to provide a service for us, but they don't want to give us a contract. So yeah, we we have that clearly that's an issue. As well. I would imagine. Um, I would imagine there may be an issue with their output as well. They can't even bother to get a contract. Possibly. Um, just it would be uh, for the board to create the questions or determine what the questions are with the scope of the other firm. Um, they're really relying on you to ask the specific questions that they can answer. I think some of what the second firm could potentially deliver are outside the capability of the first firm, which is not to say that you don't make a completely valid point, because you do. Um, but you're, you're, you know, that decision would limit the scope of the deliverable is all. So I will ask for a, um, a contract from the first firm so that you can evaluate that and see the terms of um, how they operate. And then we can go from there. But if you would think about questions about the scope. I mean, a contract is just telling us that the services that they're going to provide for us. And yes. if they can't give us that, I mean, if they can say in their contract that they are not available until September or October, then put it in the contract. But right. not to give us a contract that we've been waiting for a month now doesn't seem like they're very reliable. I agree. But, I mean, and they're a lot more money than the first firm. So, I mean, maybe if you can ex express that concern. I will. Because we're not looking to have it done in a week or a month, you know. Right. But we would like to book it. Yes, yeah, right. The longer we wait, the longer we're going to be out. Exactly. Agreed. Okay. okay. Thank Thank you. You. Anything to add? Or? Yep. All right. Then we'll move on. All right. Uh, shared facilities director. I heard you say that um, earlier in the meeting they're coming in tomorrow, right? Yes. So we'll see how that goes. Mr. Portier plans to spend the day here. We'll see what they can, what he can assess with the help of Mr. Clark, who will separately. Um, bring what he has learned about the recent assessment of Dover City Hall, which would be assessed in a similar manner as a historic municipal building, right. um, just to have points to try to respond to. So I'm not sure when we'll have some kind of okay. result of that. So I don't know how much input you're going to have with, with the two of them, but if it can be like put up and say, all right, this is your most important project, and then, you know, let's do things in stages versus, you know, this is what you have to do. Let's say, like, this needs done, but it's not as critical as this part of it. Yes. So maybe year one, maybe year two, right. maybe, you know. I think that's the ultimate goal, but I don't know how much, how, how close to that we're going to get in this first round. What's clear is that it will be incomplete. Mm -hmm. And, and um, there will be steps to follow after that, mm -hmm. such as we will be directed to not even necessarily abate asbestos if we have it, but to fund an, an asbestos mm -hmm. um, evaluation mm -hmm. and what that costs. Mm -hmm. So we're going to have, I think, different paths mm -hmm. to follow to get more answers that will then become the bigger project. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. okay. Exactly. I just but, yes, know what, taken, you know, what you know, stages, you know, that we have to do before that, and and I say, if we can do a little bit at a time because the place isn't falling down, I mean we can do and try to improve it as much as possible, but a little at a time. Agree. So we'll wait to get a report for next week, hopefully. Well. Or some update next week. Some update next week. Yes. Coming tomorrow. Yes, yeah, that is. Um, to that end, the board was once um, a few weeks ago evaluating a purchase order for, um, not yet a purchase order, but whether or not to replace the town hall boiler, boiler and which yeah. model to go with. And so I was wondering if you all have thought further about that, have a decision, would like a purchase order to evaluate next week? Or if you're not in that same mindset anymore? I mean, they say it could be another year or plus, or yeah, and it could be tomorrow. Let's be honest with it. I mean, nobody well, I mean, the really life of the boy. Life, life of the boy. Yeah. Yeah. We have it already approved in the budget. Um, it's coming out of CIP, correct? Yes. All of it? Yeah. Uh, no, five. Five thousand is from taxation. And the rest of it's coming out of the CIP. It's already been approved. I think we should just go for it. 
Warren article was approved at town meeting. Yeah. So, okay. Why so. I mean, I would I would love to get a report from the shared facilities director that says close the door. This place is falling down. Don't put any more money in it. I don't think that's going to happen. Mm -hmm. So yeah. that's actually I don't want to see that report. But I would like you want more clear. information before we decide. But no, I, I think I agree with Denise. Like let's let's get a PO and we. we because you got to get one on water, you know, yeah, like sure get it in for winter months. It's, you know, it's something that we have to rush, yeah. but we can delay it a little bit depending on the first assessment. And the, the two choices were Padera's and what was the other company? One, yeah. I will fill it out to the extent that I can, and then you can choose the model. If you choose to go ahead. Well, it's going to be someone that knows more than I do about boilers. Well, and I can ask, actually, that's a good point. I can ask the two gentlemen tomorrow whether they have a recommendation for one or the other. Yeah, because I mean, I don't. Okay. Then we can discuss it more next week. Okay. Eversource proposal? Have they actually gotten back to us yet? No. No, Tabby. Another company we want to give our money to. Just want to get back to it. Employee time clock software. It was an email I saw. Me. You, to me. Okay, I'm trying to think. I'm just trying to search Caroline. for something that would be a little efficient that could be done on a computer. Mm -hmm. And if people walk in, to clock in, clock out. So we have a record of employees' time. It can be utilized, well, I would say it can be utilized by anybody in the town office. And please think fire is exempt from it because the people, they, they just don't. They, uh, they're not going to take the time to clock in right. before they get on a fire truck. Um, highway, transfer station, I don't know. I just think that's something that we have to do. I don't know if you guys got what I got from the town clerk. Yes. Um, totally unacceptable. But the, so the, the difference is the town clerk is not an employee. So. She gets paid. She does, she does look currently. For, she's looking for extra money that goes beyond her day of time. I understand that, but she's not. I'm not suggesting we're going to do that. But she's not a town employee, so she wouldn't be actually required to clock in an hour. So seriously, you know, she's an elected official. We don't have any. Okay, then don't send me extra hours then. Well, I, I didn't send it's it. Like, and no, I'm no, not, no, I'm, I'm not just in saying. Favor of it either. If, I, if saying, you can't prove that someone's have, been in this building for that a long time, how am I going to justify have it? Statutory authority. Well, she's not the only employee in the office. That is true. That is so true. there's hourly employees in this building. Yep. It's a, it was a free software. It's free for X amount of employees, yep. right? And then it was over 10, was it, I thought the email said? No, over three it, or four. No, I, I thought, thought it was not, higher than that. I, well, I didn't see what the threshold was for free, but I thought we would be in the second threshold for how many employees. Yeah. Based on highway employees as well. So it yep. depends on... Which, which employees, which we probably ought to specify in the personnel policy, would be subject to doing this. Okay. All right. And determine that. And make sure that each of those employees has access to the transfer station. May not. Have, That's I, true. I couldn't imagine, because we wouldn't have a time block when you log on your computer and they don't have... So they have access to the highway department, but I don't know if they have logging capability or that we would want to give them logging capability right. to a computer there. Okay, so then that would really be maybe police. I think either... Either that or we need to design a form that everyone uses so it's clear and, you know, understanding what they're getting paid, uh, their time ins, their times out. You know, I think that, um, it's something that I've seen, other people. I mean. The paper forms are not serving as well at the moment. No. So. No. Um, what I don't remember seeing on the, was the cost. They were different costs. There are different costs well, versus what, different what, levels. What yeah. Yeah. Hard dollars a month for I've seen, um, I don't know if it was the one that, that Denise found that was $2 per employee per month. But that those are the ones that are typically fine or that they're mm -hmm. like a dollar amount per employee right. per month. Right. Um, the other thing is that there may be something for the payroll company. There's definitely that. something oh. um, that is an add on that we can get with the financial software. So um, now that we have a bookkeeper and he's learning things quickly and doing a great job, 
we are evaluating whether or not we want to plan um, to do payroll differently. It may be beneficial for him to do payroll using the financial software, or maybe we ought to shop around and find a different payroll company. So we're evaluating that. It may be something that could play well with whatever the new software okay. is. So that, you know, because that would be even better if there's no um, paper trail and people can sign in and it kind of creates the timesheet that right. somebody can click to approve and mm -hmm. we can eliminate some paper or something. You're, you're working on it on your end as well. So, so. you know, while we can certainly do what you're Overlap. suggesting, um, I don't want to create a new process that may... It can wait. I mean, seriously, it can wait. It's just, let's keep it in our minds. Yes, absolutely. We need absolutely. to be more efficient and it could possibly help you in other areas, you know, for your record keeping in the office. I mean, it's just more about keeping accurate records and making sure that people are held accountable. We just need to identify which yeah. employees so that we can, when you all um, revise the personnel policy, yeah. we can specify which employees are subject to that and right. make sure that they all have access to how they're going to be able to do that. Yeah. Yeah. But I think it's a good idea. There, there's, I'm just going to point out another deficiency with the, with the system that we have is that employees do not have a record of how much available paid time off they have on their checks. So that is another reason why we want to look at how we can do things differently. It would be an additional cost to do that through the payroll company. Mm -hmm. But maybe if we can do it in-house, it just happens. I'll give you the company's name that we use at work. And yeah. uh, it has all of that. It would be nice to get yeah. quotes about, uh, you know, how yeah. to do things. I'll send it to you. Yeah. Anything else to say about this? Yeah. All right. Cutting trees in the park. We talked about this briefly when we had a community input time. Um, there are a number of trees that the um, engineering firm is working for. Green Mountain Power that's handling the reauthorization of our um, uh, FERC license. Uh, to operate a um, hydroelectric dam in this town, um, need to take down so they can repair the um, repair, make the needed repairs for the dam so they're in compliance um, and for ongoing maintenance issues. Um, we can discuss it more if you'd like to, or if you recall the conversation we've already had. We can uh, have a motion to grant, uh, is it uh, Green Mountain Power, that everyone's actually doing the work? Did it's the engineering firm. Um, I'm sorry, what did you say? Did the conservation committee get notified? They have been notified. They expressed their concern. I believe you were copied in the email that said essentially what Mr. Lowry said, that if there's any discretion, right. um, okay. they certainly yeah. value the trees, but understand and are not considering all the other factors that you all have to consider. Um, did that come today as well? No. no. And the garden committee, um, I, I notified the, um, the Rollins Herd Community Garden Club because they've been active in trying to mm -hmm. plant trees around town, and I didn't know if any of the trees there would have been their trees. Plants it right. Um, so likewise, they chimed in to say that no, nobody's happy about it, but they, mm -hmm. um, and if there's any discretion, they would certainly like for um, trees to stay that can stay. Mm -hmm. So why don't we uh, have a motion to grant uh, Green Mountain Power um, authority to cut down those trees, and then we can uh, even follow up with uh, Caroline and see if there's any discretion we can save that one beach tree. Uh, I'll make that motion to, to authorize Green Mountain Power to cut the trees that are marked in Bicentennial Park. Second. Any other discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 aye opposed? No. You'll, you'll follow up with that notice to see if we can see Yes, I will to find out what the rules actually are. Yes. Stormwater. That's yeah. public hearing. I'm sorry. I didn't public that. hearing. Okay. So the date that the board um, went with does not work for too many critical people. So we need to go back to the drawing board. And the dates that really do work are July 30th, 31st, or August 7th. Those are all a Tuesday or a Wednesday night. I'm on vacation. I'm on vacation. For that whole time? So one week, right? 
Um, the 30th so, and 31st is, is one, of one week. The 7th is the following week. On the 7th, that would be okay. That would be okay? Yeah. yeah that's the only day that goes. That's August. August 7th. That would be Wednesday. Yes. All right. We have your public hearing date. And it's 7 6 30. Are we good with 6 30? Sure. Yeah. Great, thank you. All right, thank you for that. Lockbox. Um, we've heard from the chief about the camera angle. Um, what are folks thinking about the lockbox idea? Uh, I don't, that one's not going to work for this purpose. If you have a butter knife, you can pop it up and over, I think. So. I think if they put a slot through the door with a box on the inside, that would probably work. I don't know what that costs. With a metal door, I think so. The fire chief indicated that he would send me a link to a box that he would recommend as a secure. We can find out how much that costs, whether or not it's feasible to install it in a secure location and perhaps budget for it depending on how much money it is. I, I would anticipate that it's here it's yeah. going to be a couple hundred dollars maybe. I don't know. Well we've already taken a position once before that we weren't in favor of doing this, right? How long ago was that to be It was that. last year. Alright, so it was a new board now, so it makes so, sense to talk about it again. So I'm, I'm assuming that there has been requests from the public that it would be great if there's a place to deposit. No. No. Nobody said that, did they? Um, I believe that the tax collector indicated that they get requests now and then, or not requests, but sort of lamentations that there is not a another way to drop things off when this place is closed. I don't. I've never heard that myself. You know, I, I make arrangements with people otherwise. Um, However, there is a convenience factor for people to be able to drop things out. So, while we don't hear it, that doesn't mean that there isn't. Right. Um, I mean, I think if we can get some prices on a secure box, we'd be willing to entertain it. Um, so we'll discuss it for another evening. We will table it until we find out more about pricing. Recreation. That's it. Yes. Recreation. Space. So, Denise, you're on. Tell us about the ongoing uh, issues with recreation. Well, we didn't get the space. Well, we got a half a hallway. Um, oh, is this stuff that does it? I mean, this is what we've already talked about, right? So. Right. So that we, yeah. So nothing's changed. Um, I wasn't so, sure, but we had to talk about it again or it didn't get taken um, last week. So. No, I thought maybe they'd all come to the census, but they didn't. Okay. So, right. um, someone from the National Guard reached out for, to me for welfare purposes to just um, tell me about things that they offer for oh, oh, families okay. in the area, just so that right. I would be aware. Right. Um, I expressed that apparently, um, Selma had said when she worked in Hampton that the National Guard came in and erected tents for, for their school for some purpose. So I asked the woman if she could look into that, and I'm meeting with her, okay. I think, next week. Good. Um, but she's going to get back to me about who a contact might be to see okay. if they okay. could be involved in erecting tents. That would be for August, right? That's the yeah. August. Yeah. All right, perfect. Hiring staff? Yeah, we have to hire two of them tonight. All right, let's do it. Them and okay, we have around. Olivia Watson. Um, she is going to be a camp counselor. Her um, a rate of ten dollars an hour okay. and effective immediately or as soon as we sign it. Okay. Are there any objections to, to hiring Ms. Uh, Watson? No. All right. Now let's sign this up. Uh, I'm sincerely, yeah, right then. Yeah. You afraid I'm going to sign in the wrong place? Well, I thought you might sign an employee <laughs> signature. I almost did. <laughs> Look at it twice. And then we have Luke Anderson, um, and he is a returning um, chem counselor. 
and he will be paid at a rate of ten dollars and twenty-five cents an hour. Okay. Also, if you can't problem. All right. Any objection to hiring Mr. Anderson? No. Nope. Have they come to see you yet with their paperwork? I still need follow-up paperwork for, one of them has incomplete paperwork, um, the rec, um, Watson, um, okay. the, rec, the rec director is aware of it, she's supposed to be coming back to me, the counselor, with that information. Okay. Um, I don't have it as of yet, so. Okay. Celia, are you going there tomorrow? I will be. Do you want her to take these so she can get the, get, so they need to sign these? Um, or I can ask the director this evening to uh, send them an email to have them stop by here before they go to work. When does that start, though? When does because this place isn't open until nine, so not so, that we can't open early if I know they're, when they're coming. Um, I think we probably have enough staff to cover pre-care, and that they would start at nine, so okay. they could come. Oh, they could come here first and then go to camp. Okay. I can help out until maybe. Okay. okay. So we'll leave this in the folders and we'll tell them to okay. have them come in. If you're going to take care of notifying. I will notify the director who okay, has contact you. information for them. Thank you. Okay. Okay. All right. Um, walking camper. We already handled that. Yeah. Um, I mean, I would advise the, um, the rec committee that um, that it seems reasonable to me that if the parents of uh, certain age children think it's appropriate for their kids to walk home at the end of the camp, then they're the parents and they can make that decision. So, uh, the reason we, we had to enact the policy before was it was the wild, wild west. <laughs> you had to have kids coming and going and before camp had been sort of uh, redesigned several years ago now, so, and that's just, as our representative, I would just, that's my humble opinion, so. I think that the committee, the Recreation Committee is trying to protect all children mm -hmm. and yeah, yeah. who are in, under their care from mm -hmm. this time to this time. Right. If the parents wish for that to happen, they should come to us, but it should be, that it should be sedating that there is no walkers until someone until, else. Right, yeah. That no, one no, person. I think that's a, a rational policy. I mean, the parents just had to sign a permission slip, and then they, I don't think they had to come here, though, is my point. We are the authorization board, not the rec. I, know, I, I understand that, but if, if, if the select board authorizes the policy... The policy that, can outline that perhaps the that. rec director can allow parents to sign the waiver form with them rather than with the select board. Yeah, and the, and so they don't have right the parents policy. don't have to come here to... Well, they can be retained here, but it's fine. Well, that, I mean, that, I mean, you guys are going to work it out. So, I mean, I'm just, just, I'm just one person. So, I mean, we're not going to decide it tonight. I mean, the rec committee is going to come up with a, with a proposal. And I'm just giving you my two cents. So. We, we have very new staff, for one, who are, who are not residents of Rollinsburg. Right. And we just want to make sure that everything is safe this year. Mm -hmm. And next year we'll bring it back up. But at this point, they have to come. Oh, yeah, the policy is the policy this year. I don't know. See what we have to do with that. If they, if they sign it with the, and give it to the rec committee, the rec committee can just bring it here and let us have it. Well, the ex officio can sign it. If you don't want to have it go to the board, the board, the ex officio can sign it. I don't think the parents have to come into a select board meeting to, to have us approve their decision as a parent whether or not they, they think they're taking a, a block or two to. I mean, last year, this this year maybe it's further. I mean, last year we had a year before last year, literally had someone across the street. <laughs> I could see see some erect from their front their driveway. So you know, we need to make them come in here and, and get a form filled out. It's even ludicrous to me, but you know, I get it. We want to protect the kids and the town's liability. But parents sign the permission, so that should be enough to me. But, you, know, you guys are going to figure it out. So, and I trust that you will. Anything else we want to talk about on that? Sorry, I don't want to. Building permit schedule of fees. Was there any update? Did Mr. Clark uh, forward uh, his suggested? Uh, no. Okay. So, um, no, there's no. The fees themselves aren't changing, it's just how we arrange them. Correct. So, all right, well, we'll wait for his email. And did he, do we know, um, the building inspector fell off here. 
but while we're talking about it, did he um, reach out to um, He has an appointment with Mr. Tony? Casanelli tomorrow okay. to review the um, conditions of approval mm -hmm. on, of his um, annual junkyard license. Mm -hmm. um, there's still no planning application received, um, but he's working on um, those items. We'll get a report back for, for our, you know, what the state of conditions are, and then I would anticipate that Mr. Clark's going to send him an e a, a letter to inform him of what any deficiencies are. In the meantime, he's reaching out to um, legal counsel of the Municipal Association about... Um, Mr. Clark. Yes, about, sorry, um, a junkyard ordinance. And, and what parts of this might be better served in the junkyard ordinance rather than in the license, and what other um, what other ramifications um, with whatever course of action the board takes. So okay. he's in process. All right. Anything else you want to say about it? Cool. All right. Policy review. How are we coming along with the? Um, it has been a busy week, Select and there's no update on the policy that you have previously reviewed, except that I am still working on it. But in the meantime, you added because, another one. I did. Um, just that you, you know, it's just a template. It comes uh -huh. from another community, um, right. and it is a city that has, you know, more staff. Right. So it's just, again, I, I give it to you for your reading so that you can um, right. think about what we might want to consider or... Um, how you may or may not want to regulate social media with regard to the town. It doesn't mean that the scope is quite right, but I, um, it, it's really quite extensive, but I present it again just so that you can be thinking more comprehensively before we narrow it down to what's more appropriate for Walter. So, um, looking for general feedback about, about it, you know, you can I wasn't necessarily looking for a discussion on it since you, you know, I emailed it today and you haven't had a chance to look at it. But so we're just talking about police, high, highway, and fire, right? Those are the three. They're official at like Facebook pages. Well, and recreation. And rec. Yeah. And rec. All right. What about library? They have one. Although we cannot regulate them. The trustees would regulate their use of social media. Um, but they do have one. So, okay, so the Library Board of Trustees has a policy already? I don't know that they do or they don't. I know that they have a Facebook page. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. I don't know if that's that and I don't know, honestly. Maybe they can forward their policy. Well, that, so. I, I don't know if it's the library itself that has a Facebook page or if it's the friends group that has a Facebook page. I mean, that would be separate. Because that would be have anything, separate. They wouldn't have anything to say about that. So. Okay, so, because I don't do social media, I is the police and fire and highway not benevolent association, fireman's association? They, they, they have, their, they have, they don't say that, and and they are at least two of them. They're they're they're, they're all monitored and um, used by town personnel. So, but they don't say it's the police benevolent association. The police has a Rollinsford police department Facebook page. Facebook page. And so, a benevolent association as well. I don't know if um, they do or not. That that we couldn't try to regulate because they, yeah, they have they were right. Right. Okay. So and the highway they don't they have a they Facebook have it, and it, the official highway Rollins for Highway Department. Rollins for Highway Department. Yeah. Rollins for Fire Department. Yeah. So those would be official uh, means of communication from the town. Although wouldn't necessarily say that the select board authorized or set them up. And I think that's but part of the um, part of the problem. Yeah. Part of the conversation is just awareness to the department heads and to the employees that um, there are serious implications with the use of social media right. and responsibility that goes along with that that maybe they're not even aware of even before there are specific rules around its use. And to date, there hasn't been an issue with what they've been posting, as far as I know. I mean, it's just. It's more of this to be proactive to protect the town and the employees from just in case someone screwed yes. up comes down the line. I mean, yes. I don't want anyone to think that you know someone has done something that would know. There are a number of deficiencies in, 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 in 
what we have policies and what we don't have policies for. It, 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 we tend to be more on we don't have a policy than we have a policy on just about everything in this town. So, which has, um, I guess, served us at one point, but um, doesn't necessarily serve us well now because issues have been cropping up on all sorts of things. So we don't have an issue with policy on, and then we wing it, and that's not good for anybody. So. Do we want to take this and digest it for another evening? We just emailed it today, so I mean, this is, this is it's pretty hefty here. We're on several pages. Uh, the city of Lebanon is and well served by their guidelines. Well, I don't see MySpace as part of the social network. We can the, certainly edit that uh, and and your uh, friends too. You know. It could probably be edited annually to be you know okay. added in it to have all the. Your your MySpace account? But yeah, no. So I don't. We don't have anyone any partners that have like a Twitter account. It's all Facebook, right? That's a really good that we question. Know of, right? um, there was once upon a time an official town Twitter account, but that's um, gone by the wayside. I, well, it's certainly not currently used, but it exists out there in the neither world somewhere. Um, so not to right. my knowledge, but I'm not on those other platforms, so I don't I don't know. Okay. Anyway, so we can review it and start thinking yep. about it. Um, is there anything else to say about policy review? You're going to get us some updates soon. Yes, I will. Perfect. 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 Okay. Perfect. Town administration, standing items, board member activity. Who wants to go first? I'll go. Um, last Tuesday or Wednesday night, we had a, a meeting of the CIP committee. Um, it was really just kind of a level setting. Uh, we did a lot to chair. Ms. Heward has agreed to be the chair. Okay. Um, so she's going to keep uh, the spreadsheet yeah. up to date and um, keep us on, on track. And we set up meetings. Three meetings? Three meetings. Um, to do department heads um, all in the next like, month and a half. Okay. Okay. Good to start early. Yep. So we we'll get a good start on that. Okay. Yeah. Um, I think that's it. Denise, okay. anything there? No. Okay. Quite yeah, right. so. uh, Historic committee wants to meet this week on Thursday, and I have to work that night actually. I have an event at my office that I have to be met. Um, but they did send a number of questions uh, regarding Bicentennial Park. Um, but the radiation isn't here this evening to answer, so maybe you can pass it on. Did you, did you usually see that on an email? I don't remember. No, but okay. I have, you know, I had an interesting conversation with Mr. Charpentier. Yes. And I didn't realize that the park, the grassy area along Park Street, at the corner of Scotland Road, yeah. right along Front Street, yeah. is not Bicentennial Park. That's in the back. That's Bicentennial Park is just a boat launch. I thought the whole area was Bicentennial yeah. Park. So that front park... We're just generically calling the park. The park does park. not have a name. Correct. Yes, so that was causing confusion because... Right. Sorry to cause confusion. No, no, it's, so it's the, okay. The, I just learned something. The <laughs> road agent had proposed because the, the flight poles were damaged. Right. They were down by the boat launch. Moving them, moving the, 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 the large boulders that they sit in mm -hmm. um, to the front, along with the, the large boulder that is the plan. We're planning a bus coming up to the front. And the, um, the historic committee wanted to know if he still planned on doing that. I think this board had actually approved that or not. I don't recall if we did or not. But, and, um, it was already done. It's not already done. He took the, the flag, the broken flagpoles out. Oh, and they took the plaques off. Oh, okay. So they wouldn't be just, you know. Yeah. Um, also, the, um, the light poles down there. He was going to um, check the the box, check the key or the electrical box there in the bushes and see if something had been tripped before we asked public service and whoever the Eversource to come over and uh, take a look. But actually, they're not Eversource, I don't believe. They're not the large regular um, light poles. I believe so. That, so we pay an electric bill for them, right? 
um, that doesn't mean that we would be the one to necessarily replace a light bulb or repair a fixture like that. So that doesn't mean we're not. Right. It just doesn't mean look into it. Yes. But if, if George, I know he's busy with um, Sligo Road this week, but when he gets back after his vacation for the... Yes, I'll ask him about that. We can get into that box one way or another and see if um, the breaker has been tripped up. Yes. I hope it's as simple as that. Because it hasn't been on for a while, so. And I think that's it that they wanted to know about. Um, and an administrator update. It's been a really busy week. Um, the bookkeeper's doing a fabulous job getting up to right. speed and taking right. on more duties. And Perfect. yet it's been intense to try to train him and do other things at the same time. Um, you know that there was a lot of welfare activity also. Talk about that. In the past week. So um, between the two of those, it's been um, really busy. I got a call from, um, not a call, an email from Mr. Shore in Dover regarding the light at the intersection of Oak Street and Rollins Road, inquiring about whether or not the town has ever maintained it, which we don't believe we ever have. You laughed at him when he asked, right? Um, but the box, the control box for it, you know, is in Rollinsford. Right. So um, they're not at a point in time where they're willing to, where they're, He's just, he was just gathering information, not necessarily a change of procedure or anything else, but just noting that it is in Rollinsford and Dave Dover's paying for it to be. I thought he conceded so, that they had been doing it all along. They had been doing it, that it was, agree, it was an agreement years ago. They I were, saw the email. Yeah. Mm -hmm. they, yes. Yes. He found that in his information search um, during our email exchange, trying to figure out who had maintenance records. but. Um, it does make sense given that we have no other street lights. Um, and we don't have one on uh, Portland and Oakland. Right, those are all state maintained. So we really don't have any traffic lights in Rollinsford. Which, um, so in any case, um, I'm grateful they're going to continue to Perfect. maintain it for now. There's no news, but um, there's a bit of a go around about that. Um, you know, when, he had a question about does our personnel put it on flashing? Yes. And they have, they have or, or someone's putting on flashing in bad weather and stuff. I don't know if it's our personnel. Did you check with the police? And so I, did, I sent an email out to the three department heads. Mm -hmm. It is not fire or highway. I did not get a response from the police. So okay. I would follow up on that because it, it may be... Um, I mean, that it, in the winter, it's so slippery. Don't go down right now. So they so someone is. Yeah. yeah. Stage oh, them. Um, Wednesday afternoon last week, I went to the Stormwater Coalition meeting in Dover, which was really informative. Um, Paul was there. He's, I'm, I'm very grateful that he's so very dedicated to the topic. Mm -hmm. um, the state was there. It was a nice recap of where we are in process for the year with stormwater. Um, the coalition is trying to get every, everybody's on such completely different pages or stages of their, um, with their permit requirements. Mm -hmm. But um, it really caused me to think that because Rollinsford is so small with the number of outfalls that we have, that when we get to subsequent years in our testing and reporting requirements become more intense, that maybe there's an opportunity to try to share some of our, you know, outsource some of our duties to a bigger community who's doing it on a much larger scale. So, you know, Partner with them. yeah, I'm just hoping something like that could work out. I haven't talked to anybody about that, um, but they kind of made light of the fact that um, Paul being so comprehensive and detail-oriented is very concerned with our six outfalls and Dover has dozens and dozens and dozens of right. And of course, $150,000 stormwater budget to match, right. you know, but um, it, it still really put into perspective that maybe we can fit into somebody else's bigger equation that way with some of our um, requirements. They have to one of the larger communities that are doing it maybe. That's what I'm hoping for, a conversation later as we right. get deeper into this, because every year our requirements get sure. more um, Q 
cumulative and um, intense and technical and such. Um, the only other thing is uh, the Recreation Committee posted a meeting for Wednesday. And I, Denise, I think you said that you were not available on Wednesday. And so I thought I would attend that this week to make sure they've got their loose ends tied up. What for, Wednesday? Um, the day after tomorrow. They just posted a meeting for the day after tomorrow. It's the same night as water and sewer. And oh, you said you were going I to wanted to go to water and sewer. So I thought I would fill in for you for recreation if you if you want, and then we can regroup on Thursday about whatever might have happened. But um, yeah. I just want to make sure that they have what they need, mm -hmm. since I'm sure there's things floating around being the first day of camp, first week of camp. Yeah. Four. Yeah, that's all that I have. That's it? All right. Review of correspondence. We have already taken care of the two uh, uh, pieces of paper to hire. We're putting the work order on hold. We have received a, um, some correspondence from the modern sewer district. That went out to everybody in the all district the about the water quality. Oh, ah, okay. So that's all this is? Yes. No have violations. You, have you no in regard to review them? Only as far as to see that there are no violations. But not any. Well, if two folks want to take a look at it. I got it. You got your request? I'm a customer. Okay. So. That's all we're calling. Um, that is a letter that already went out, but it's it today. went to the incorrect owner. Yes. All right. So this is a um, review of uh, the project oh, someone's permit. working on. So yes. this, uh, um, it's a letter going to um, Silver Street, 575 Silver Street, regarding um, an excavation slash construction project that they are doing without a building permit. Two requests for disbursement. I see colleagues would like to get paid, so if there's any objection from either of you that want to get paid, I'm going to sign up. No objection. I didn't think so. Thank you for your service. Uh, next is from the Department of Revenue Administration from the state. Uh, dear Selectman, uh, pursuant to RSA 21J colon 11, a contract has been submitted to us for our review and recommendations. To contract the contract for the 2017 appeal of Public Service of New Hampshire's assessment has been reviewed and we are making no recommendations. The DRA's general recommendation is that all municipalities use the Department of Revenue sample contracts for assessment activities as they adequately describe and define in sufficient detail the entire evaluation process. Sample of various contracts can be found on our website. Once the contract has been signed, please forward a copy to our office. Please keep in mind the department does not warrant your contract against any errors or omissions. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to contact me. Linda Kennedy. So, is, is this something that uh, is being handled by Avatar on our behalf, or? I don't think, yes, yes. Avatar and I together, it's, you know, it's more of a point okay. of information. All right. You know, they have to send out the, and do they receive the contract. Okay. Any, any questions from the rest of the board or comments? All right. Then we have a letter from via certified mail to, um, from Klein Schmidt um, in regards to the hydroelectric permit application. Yes, sir, madam. Letters to inform you that a wetlands permit application will be submitted to the New Hampshire Department of Environmental Services Wetland Bureau for a wetlands permit by notification for purpose uh, for a proposed spillway crest repair work at the Rawlingsford Dam located on the Salmon Falls River in the town of Rawlingsford. Uh, under state law, RSA 482A colon 3, subsection Roman I, subsection D, 1, via certified mail. I am required to notify you about this wetland permit application, which proposes work abutting your property. Once the permit application is submitted to DES, a copy of the permit application, including the plans associated with the project, 
will be available for your review at the town clerk's office. A copy of the permits also, including the plans, will be on review at the uh, headquarters in Concord. So from Katie Sellers at Klein Schmidt Associates. So this is basically the work we've been talking about at the day. <laughs> We just so, approved the tree removal. Board, note so. that you're getting the notice not because it's your property, but because it abuts your property. Right. Um, so the other thing that it doesn't really explicitly say is that water is going to be diverted in order for this to take place, and so it's not really clear um, what's going to be visible, what's the impact to traffic, um, if any, or or to Scotland Road getting shut down, or you know, any We're follow things. up with uh, so, Ms. Um, what her name was, Ms. Sellers from Kleinschmidt? Yes, although I would think that she would know enough to, you know, notify us if she's shutting down our... He leave his driveway and anyone else who has to go down there, so. Right, but... So this, in, above and beyond the tree cutting. So, what, what, it's, what it's really telling you there is that there are boards that should yeah. go on top of the dam and broken over time and as part of the renewal they're replacing the boards on top of the dam. But to do that you have to get the water down to a level low enough that you can do the work necessary. So um, it's not clear, you know, when I spoke with her over the phone when she called for the abutters list, um, she did say that they would be diverting water, but she didn't get into any detail about what that would look like and how long this is going to take and any other impacts that we might want to alert our residents to. So follow up with her. I will follow up with her and find out Perfect. what's going on with that. Do you divert it once before of a milton area? Or? I'm sure they have to divert it all the time for right. any kind of mill repair here or there. Mm -hmm. Everybody's always got, you know, one or another going on, you know, in the state somewhere. Yes, they, they divert water. You know, it's just not clear to me, you know, are they just really, is this all happening along the river? on the north side of Front Street so that nobody would never ever necessarily notice? Or is this something that's, since they're notifying abutters even across the streets, that there's a potential impact um, in some other way? I just want to be sure that if there's something that we need to alert the residents of, that we know what that is so that we can do that. Purchase order 1643, Blitz Air Park, 10 two hours of jump. Uh, I can't read your writing. Uh, two, 10 two hour jump passes. Jump. Yeah, at, jump socks, that was it. And then Blitz Airport at $27 for two, a total of $270 and 10 jump socks as needed for each jumper. Okay, well, three, $3 an hour for $30, or so the total estimate of $300. Second, second, second. Al is talking about. So this, this includes the, the actual hour that you're going to be at the park. And if they go there afterwards, special songs. I don't know this because my child came home with something. Yeah, like Do we have to buy them? Yeah. So, so is that sense. part of their fee that they paid? Yeah. Yes. They're charged $110 for the week, and that is their big trip for next week. Um, we try and keep our activities between $30 and $50 per child, and this falls uh, right under the $30 market. And some of the, I say um, socks per, as needed per jumper, because every jumper needs a pair of socks, and some have gone last year and have their own pairs. 
So it may not total the thirty dollars if they bring them with them. Yes. It's a popular activity for children of a certain age. You can imagine the advantage of sending your seven to eight year old to this place where they bounce and burn off lots of energy. <laughs> I certainly know the benefits of it. <laughs> it's an indoor warehouse filled with trampolines and they have a ninja warrior course with things hanging from the wall that you can climb up and bounce down onto that. And but they have to wear special socks. <laughs> so to prevent falls and slips, they wear special socks. So, oh, yes. Celia Almost. asked that I reserve that online with my credit card. The yes. policy um, limits my purchases to $200, right. um, except in conjunction with another department head, mm -hmm. um, up to $400. Mm -hmm. So if you would indicate on the purchase order that you are authorizing me to charge this, that would be really great. I will do that. And we only have to pay actually the fee, not the socks at this right. time. Okay. So. Um, I'm not sure. I need to contact them to find out if we have to pay for the socks. They usually pay for the socks up there with credit card. I don't know if they. Like if that. we need to pay it separately, we can pay it separately. But if you don't um, know how many people are going and need them, right. we have um, nine registered campers that week, mm -hmm. and we can. The director for Team Camp is starting on Wednesday. She was committed for something else. So she can email the families this weekend. And if they forget them? I would hope, I, I think that's a conversation you ought to have with them about how are they going to build a town or how are we going to pay on site for three pairs of socks if, you know, somebody didn't calculate correctly or didn't bring them or what have you. And these um, are 12 to 15 year olds and they usually have money on them for the vending machines and so forth. So if they, Forget their socks. They may have to for the over here. Um, provide their own funds. All right. Any other questions or comments? Discussion? Uh, if you could just let me know when you want to come in and we do this so that I'm prepared ahead of time. Not on Monday. Monday's okay. Uh, well, it's <laughs> for next Monday, so we need to do, do it, it this week. <laughs> yes. Prior to. Um, right. Good. Thank you. Right. And we need to reserve it. Any other discussion? Purchase order 1643. Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Sign in and sign out. 
It is something that we're going to review at the meeting on Wednesday. Okay. I'll wait for you. No, I, I, I get it. We want to make sure the kids are safe. That's not the issue. Just, sure no, it is the issue because it's in the policy said they have to be signed in and signed out by the parent. Right. right. So if they sign in and sign out by the parent, then they're not walking unless they're with their parent. So if they want something different than that, they have to come and talk to somebody of, of right. authority. Right. Uh, that I understand, and, and okay. I'm okay with that. But, but, but I guess maybe I'm misunderstanding. Is there a written policy on how, what to do with the people that want to allow their kids to walk and sign themselves in and out? It's just not allowed. But At the this point, it wasn't it allowed. Better. So now we're going to have to address it. Okay. So we have. That's had, where my confusion was. Okay. It says that they must be signed in and out. However, we do have an occasional child, right. like it happened this morning, um, okay. that said that shows up unaccompanied. Gotcha. And un unofficially, our this is not written. It's our policy to call the parent and say. Your child showed up unattended. Right. We need to, to have you sign them in and out. Gotcha. Okay. So you, you're handling it now. You want to perhaps potentially, you don't, not necessarily you are, but potentially re revise that policy. And you're going to bring it to this board for review and we'll say whether or not we think it's a good idea. Come on this right page now. That um, sounds like or no. we're moving forward with yes. Okay. You don't have to do that. I just want to hold on to say. Um, okay. Because it's conflicting right. for the teens that I are walking you. of that age versus okay. the Camp Raleigh. And is there anything else for us to do? One question. Um, the Camp Raleigh director asked um, a few of us on the committee, I don't know if it went to the whole committee, but not, about setting up a Facebook page. And you guys talked about social media tonight. We don't have a policy. So, so are they allowed to set up a page? <laughs> yes or no? Is it there? I thought there already was a... There is a page every year, and it just gets the name changes to whatever the current year is. There's been a Facebook page. In the right. Past. I think my kid went to camp last year, and there's a Facebook page, right? Yes. Can it just be just up to you? And they have to be careful about photographing them and make sure that right. if they're taking pictures and putting it on there, that people was, never prove yeah. that those There was children, a waiver. Right. That was I know there is, and they said they've been a, they're going to make sure, even well, on Facebook, right. that that, yes, that sure is that highly... And it was a closed group with no students in the it is a closed so group, so, so only the, it, it's sent, right. invitations are only sent to, to the, the parents, parents of the campus. Camp. So. Right. So, I thought, but, thought, but. So, so I just wanted to check, because you guys were talking about social media and about new phones. Are we good? Yeah. Right. Come on up. Uh, just a clarification on what she was just touching on. So as somebody that was just approved to let their kid ride the bike to school, does that mean I need to leave work tomorrow to sign my child in at 9 o'clock? No. I don't think so. I think we gave permission, permission to, to drive for a walk. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. okay. If, you, if you didn't get that permission, then you would have to be signing okay. in and out. But I think I, I was confused after what we just talked about, too. So, okay. No. You're good, though. You're good. Okay. Perfect. All right. Can I grab your first name? Sure. Eric, E R Y K. Okay. Can I get your last name at the beginning? Okay. Your son is Patrick. Yes. I don't know why I called you. I knew you were here. I don't know why I called you Patrick. <laughs> I saw the name when I signed it. The R Y. I must have had my glasses. Yeah, it's the R Y K. All right. Any any other public input? All right. We are going to now go into non-public. Do we have personnel as well? That was I yes. Do, yeah. Okay. So we have a personnel issue, and then, well, and then we're going to go into welfare, and then we're going to go home. So you're more than welcome to wait, and then we'll come back in and out. Sorry, I'm leaving. Got to take. We're going home. Down. Yep. We're all good. Thank you so much for filming. Thank you. We appreciate it. Oh, have a good so night. Hey, Eric. Nope. No. Just turn it off. Just turn it off.